What up crew, how's it going in the hood? Uh, today I thought I'd do a video, uh, well actually I'm just driving to a concert so I thought I'd just jump on and like share some thoughts. Uh, something I always want to attack is this like kind of miss, um, this miss, how do you say it, misunderstanding of the way that social networks and hierarchies work. So we get these words, right, like uh, we get, uh, I mean obviously the understanding of these things is important for obvious reasons. You get these fr um, classic phrases like knowledge is power, um, which is an interesting phrase. Uh, but you, then we have like the media, which is like uh, delivering a narrative, which is kind of delivering a kind of like version of how these social hierarchies work and the goings on and the happenstances which occur within them or without them. and. So then we have other words like popular cultural words like conspiracy theory, which is to say that it's funny because like uh, what like it, it's just a really kind of funny thing to just it's a strange label and a very reductive thing to put on people because to say conspiracy kind of um, proposes one correct it kind of proposes that the media version of events is correct um, and it it denounces another version, right, in that word. So it's a very powerful word, and this is the power of linguistics. Um, but obviously the media, it's funny because they tell a lot of truths, but they tell, they do double speak, and they know how to weave a story. They know how to misdirect without lying, and that's the kind of skill and wizardry of double speak. Um, and this is like the power of rhetoric. You create new words, uh, you attach uh, meanings to them and then you kind of like unleash them on the public and then the, the the narrative is unfolded and everyone kind of argues within the parameters of these very difficult linguistic paradigms which are kind of preconceived in my opinion so it's really interesting um so an obvious one to sort of use as an example is like the russia america thing like russia and america um in the media, it's always like they're at kind of war. Not war, but like they are like enemies. Like, oh, Russia might come and do this, Russia might come and do that. We're gonna do this, this and that. Or the other one is like China, 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 China. It's like this idea that we are somehow like culturally and politically opposed to other nations. Even me now, it's in me. I'm saying we, as if like I am part of this, which I'm not. Um, so this is like a lie, well not a lie, it's a kind of double speak because I like to think of it now like a comparison within a metaphor would be um, football, like Manchester United versus Liverpool, sworn enemies, however business partners, um, they're not, on the, within the terms of engagement they compete against each other so for points for goals maybe for like economics or for like certain proxy wars they fight but there's a strict rule of engagement because if they don't adhere to the rules there would be no uh, premier league corporation and there would be no like profit um at the end of it there would be no like they have to work within the rules of certain things and that's where there is see in a positive sense you wouldn't call it collusion you'd call it cooperation, right? So this is how it works as well politically between people like Russia, between like Apple and Samsung, or between all these other people. They have a shared interest in, for, for example, Apple and Samsung would have a shared interest in the deregulation of like mining in uh, third world countries. They can partner on that interest so that they can compete in the marketplace against each other. So in some ways there are odds and in some ways they're in complete collusion with each other. And it's the same, this is how it works on a big level, but then it's still the same thing when you think about, um, so like the shape of the, 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 the geometry of hierarchies, right? Think of like how it used to work with like, uh, monarchs this is the this is the pyramid structure of social dynamics and it's not like oh illuminati confirmed there's nothing like that although you know that's not to say it's it operates outside of this law um it's like when 
one person, a monarch, takes the lead on something, everyone then derives power from that. So being in alignment with that monarch or that leader or that person, it's like this is how the non-physical energies and <laughs> it's funny because these things, relationships, they're not physical, right? They're like ba they're like memory based and they this is how like complex a thing it is, but there's a kind of geometry to it. So when <clears throat> when I'm trying to think of an example so it doesn't work when someone says oh how can everyone be in on it when there's like a mass uh, kind of like thing like let's say for example like a health scare and people say but how can all the scientists be in on it it's really complicated to understand the fact that no one even has to be no one has to be in on anything because they've for a start, again, you have to go back uh, in another aspect, especially to do with knowledge and science, is that when you consider how the education, you have to study the education system, how is that, it, it isn't, um, the education system isn't teaching people how to uh, perform like strict scientific uh, or data analysis, they're mostly teaching people how like what has already been taught it's like a um, regurgitation process we are it's kind of like who is the best computer who has the best memory and who has the best RAM and you will get the job because within these hierarchies within these hierarchies it doesn't favor <clears throat> the geometry of the hierarchy um, to uh, to have critical thinkers who are breaking up the hierarchies, who are exposing the ideas. So this is why you see like oppressed groups and stuff, you know, because there's like favorability within, within communities and stuff. And like, I'm not saying that that's all wrong. Like everyone should, in fact, like people should form their own hierarchies, you know, like people should, people should, there should be leaders and stuff you know it's not like a evil thing it's not like but it's funny I think like the pyramid structure or the triangular nature the way that it's established it's funny how in physics uh, that is the strongest structure a pyramid with the strongest widest base and like going up in, in, in like to the most narrow point um, for weight displacement so in physics it's the most uh, stable structure but also in, in the metaphysics of power, it is also the most rigid uh, in terms of our personalities and in terms of like how we operate within society. So that's why I think it's really hard to break these hierarchies and for people to understand because like the different levels, right? So on the bottom of the, and this applies to so many different things as well, like that are rolled into it. So. Um, is it's multi-dimensional geometry we're talking about here and it's also like metaphoric and conceptual so you have to like have to kind of like sometimes piece it all together like let me just think so on the bottom of the pyramid you have like uh, all the things that are like taught as education uh, all of the things that are like just considered as like proofs like foundational knowledge uh, like atoms for example the nature of reality where we are who we are, where, who, what, why, um, all of that kind of thing. When you try to question any of these things, or any of the establishments which kind of like represent these ideas, it it shakes people's, it would mean, for, for those things not to be true, it would mean that, you know, think of everyone working in media, think of everyone working in like, uh, uh, science and and like air engineering and stuff it would mean that their entire um, foundational premise is wrong so their own hierarchical structure of belief within them is being shaken and their pl therefore their place within it is being threatened uh, on some level because if this information was to proliferate uh, it would mean that they would lose their identity as a arbiter of this stuff and with the identity they'd lose their power um, that these things hold so 
you're dealing with like, this is why uh, the nature of reality is so important. And this is why the education system is so important to hierarchies. And I'm not even saying it's like, for some people it's like well-known occult ritual magic. I'm sure of it. For other people it's just like a second nature kind of thing because we're dealing with essential parts of ourselves. Like we want to orient ourselves with where we are, who we are, what we are. So education deals with that. You're a human. This is biology. You live here. Uh, this is uh, physics. This is the nature of your environment. It delivers. Uh, it delivers answers to foundational questions, which you naturally ask as a child, right? Uh, I don't think it answers. And it, the funny thing is, it answers them within a. With, it, it creates a paradigm. Of, I mean, now we live in a paradigm of materialism. So. It's, it installs a value. It installs a, a, a value for, installs a value system of material and it doesn't introduce people to the, or give any value to the transcendentals, which are like, include rationality, logic, um, spirituality, um, even math, geometry. These are transcendental ideas that go beyond physical. I mean, I know you can see geometry physically, but geometry exists as information outside of the physical world. Um, we discovered it, like it, it, it just exists as a law. Um, you can't say you made it because the relationship is, you, you drew it, but then you observed the relationship, like a circle, a ratio, you know, the, 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 the pi ratio or whatever, the perfect circumference of a circle that will meet itself back at the beginning is a law unto itself. It's a transcendental object. So, when all these things are installed through education, which again, it's not a conspiracy necessarily, because I, again, I question this, but I am coming to believe, which I don't wanna believe this, right? But information and everything that we believe to be true is kind of like truth has to exist outside of what you know right if you want something to be true it has to have been a truth for you to find it supposes that truth exists outside of like our creation we can't just like make something up and call it truth you know but like going back to ideas like the tree of knowledge okay like when we have these like science and religion debates we're often confronted with how 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 questions why how why how why how why and it's knowledge questions it's answering it from the fallen state of man like this is the tree of knowledge okay it's like you think you can use language and information which is a product of the reality itself. It's already nestled in, nestled within the creation of reality. You think you can use that, um, sub that, that that kind of like transcendental substrate to to explain the thing it's nestled in, but you can't because it it's like made of the stuff it's nestled in. Do you know what I mean? Like the other stuff is already there in place to give rise to this stuff. So information is like fallen. It's not like bad. It's not that information is evil. It's just that it's like comes after after creation. It comes after the fact. Like even me sounding now, even me making these noises and talking to you, I'm using words to explain stuff, but I don't even really know what my fucking vocal cords are doing. They're just there, it's already been made. The body's already there to carry words, to carry sounds. The brain is there to decipher, like it's all already there. And we're like arguing within a, so when you say like people are like, ah, oh, but like, so like we'll debate God, like how, like, it, it, like science can prove God's not wrong. And it's like classic, it's like, <laughs> it's so funny how it's like people are trying to 
they're so blind in, 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 a, in an incredible way. It's almost like a disability, like a spiritual blindness, because they're unable to uh, differentiate between like knowledge and wisdom, uh, essentially. It's like, you can't, like the tree of knowledge, right? Is there, it's Google, it's in your hand, it's the apple, it's biting the apple. It's in your hand, the tree of knowledge. You're asking questions, but it's never ever gonna tell you what you should, like how you should behave. Like you'll go onto Google and it'll give you like, oh, this is made of this, this is that, 10 million studies, blah, 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 blah. But it isn't like, information isn't like deriving any kind of like how you, like what you ought to do, like how you should go about your day in a moral way. Like, so information can't develop a person spiritually. Like, that's why you can read all of the books, all the spiritual books in the world, all the self-help books. But until you, like, actually, like, sit down and do the practices or in, engage in, like, moral behavior, helping people, being charitable, you can't develop, like, a spiritual uh, energy. You can't develop, like, spiritual wealth from information. You can only regurgitate it back because it's like you're stuck in a world of symbol. You're like continually in a sub matrix. Like that's what language is, it's a sub matrix. And when you're only identify, this is what, edu back to education, this is what education teaches. It develops the sub matrix in people. Now we have a sub sub matrix. We've created the sub matrix information. Now we've created an internet and a data, uh, like a whole like uh, worldwide data network which is like attempting to uh, kind of like give breath of life to this digital world, you know? It's kind of trying to like um, awaken this digital collective zombie, this AI. And it's, uh, it's, it's fucking fascinating when you think about it because it's so biblical, like everything that's happening. It doesn't, uh, yeah, like this whole thing with information, it's amazing, you know? The tree of knowledge, information, biting the apple. Learning, like where's the, where's the morality? Where's the how we should be? And it's funny because the media is so, um, is so, preoccupied with like um, social politics uh, yeah it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't like it, it never really it, it tells you anything it never really gives you a kind of like strong sense of, of the where it's derived from it's kind of baseless it's, it's non-scientific like with all of these kind of like uh, this like it's all inverted it's like the striving for uh, inclusivity is actually delivering the opposite it's actually like creating homogeny like for example to be inclusive of for, for Muslims and Hindus to be inclusive of each other they have to accept that their spiritual ideals are in polarization to each other you can't say, you can't get everyone to believe the same thing. You have to accept each other. And then it's like, the actual truth is, you have to accept that like, our values are different. Which also goes along with like, behavior. Like, so Islamic people, like, are against same-sex marriage, okay? They don't go for that. It's in their book, they don't think it's right. So that, that's their thing, okay? So, for them, to be, to be inclusive of a, in like America, for example, it's like we need to, they're accept, telling people to accept Islam on one hand, which is fine, but they're also telling Islam to accept this, which goes against their ideas. So the only way to be truly in inclusive is to accept that uh, people can have prejudice, people can have... Uh, opposing opinions and actually you know 
that's all right. Within your own communities, you can socially police. You can, you can create um, 